what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button and i hope you like this video this is real housewives of atlanta season 13 episode 5 listen we're gonna run through this real quick because let me tell you something bravo um let's let, let's talk for a minute let's have a little chat i have never in my life felt like a s episode was more produced than this one in the whole franchise we get it that y'all manipulate storylines. We get it that y'all manipulate editing. We get it that y'all manipulate scenes. That's fine. We don't care. We enjoy the show. But I really feel like y'all was shoving so much stuff down our throat. This whole situation with Kenya and Latoya, even if for even if I believe that Kenya decided to indulge in a relationship with Toya, first of all, I, with Latoya, first of all, I don't care. But second of all, you shoved it down our throat. You've been shoving it down our throat since the first episode. And it's like, one, we don't care. And two, why is Kenya's love life, like why is it so salacious that she's messing with Latoya? Like, are we not past that, that that's a storyline? Are we not past the whole homosexuality oh you're with a woman like are we not past that anyway the lady we got cynthia kenya and latoya going to the lingerie store we find out that kenya then sent a naked selfie or a naked picture to latoya now really it's a side pose and you can see kenya's ass but hell we can see listen i didn't see more of kenya's skin in a bathing suit than well not but y'all know what I'm saying. It's a side pose. But, of course, the illusion was that she was was um, naked. And Latoya was talking about how beautiful her body was. And, oh, my goodness. And, you know, the producers were like, why did you send a naked picture? And she was like, like, it's just, it was a lot. I just felt like, I really felt like they were pandering to me. Then, um, of course, they had to talk about the fact that Kenya wasn't invited to the party. Um, Cynthia was real awkward and felt some kind of way about it. So, it is what it is. Okay, that's what happened. Boom. All right. Um, then they had to talk about um, Candy's party. And somehow or another, they just started this whole rumor that Joe Biden was going to be at this party. Clearly, you have never been at an event with a high-level person before, especially a high-level politician. Um, Ma'am. There's all sorts of clearance that has to happen. There are all sorts of things that have to take place. You don't just happen to go to a party where the president, the person running, the, the former vice president, forget the fact that he was running for president, but the former vice president of the United States. Clearly, I hope that was just for the cameras and y'all was being silly and you didn't really feel like it was. Then we have Portia, her mom, and her sister with Lauren. They're over to the house. Lauren then showed up with some hot dogs that didn't belong to Dennis's company. And Portia was like, ma'am, ma'am, just because me and Dennis ain't a couple right now, don't mean you're going to be shopping at the competitor. Because when he went, I win. Because I got this whole baby over here, okay? When he went, I win. We all win. Um, Portia is back to being a vegetarian because remember she's been a vegetarian before she fell off the wagon which is fine i'm not judging her for people do it all the time people say they're gonna do this and they fall off the wagon go for it Portia. i'm glad you're trying to be healthier and you're changing your eating habits and all that go for it girl go for it so they end up having a whole conversation about um of course they had to talk about the party and why lauren decided not to invite kenya and of course Portia was like girl i ain't tripping because don't nobody ever know where me and kenya stand better safe than sorry i ain't mad about it and i don't care like it was a good party you ain't have to do it i appreciate who i appreciate the fact that you did it and i appreciate who showed up and we had a good time moving on so then they proceed to have a conversation about Portia. i think Portia's writing a book or something i don't know child and they got into a conversation about their father because her and Lauren are really half sisters. They share a father, but not a mother. And they had a conversation about basically the different relationships that they had because Lauren lived with their dad because the dad was still with Lauren's mom, I guess for most of her childhood or a lot of her childhood or hell, all of her childhood. And Portia was sort of the weekend, you know, I got partial custody and my sister comes over on the weekends type of situation. And 
So they had a conversation about that, about how they were treated differently and about their different experiences with their dad. And, you know, her mom was like, yeah, you know, I did not share a lot of things with you because I was protecting you. You didn't need to know everything about your father. He was, and you know what I respect? And this is something that Ayanla always says. Ayanla Van Zandt says on her show, she says, he was your husband, but that's her or his daddy. Their relationships are different. And as a parent and as a good parent, you should want to protect the relationship that a child has with their, with their parent. You can't visit your issues on a kid's relationship with their child with their parent and i wish more adults would do that i really wish more parents would do that fathers mothers whatever um and of course portia said you know as a child i didn't realize what i was missing and what i wasn't getting and as an adult i look back and i realized on you know i realized all of the things that i didn't get from my dad and that is why even no matter where me and dennis are i want dennis to always be a part of you know Pilar's life we're going to co-parent we're going to make it work because at the end of the day that is her father and I never want to have her miss or lose any of that and then Portia went on to say listen Pilar wasn't an accident I knew what I was doing I had met a man who loved me who had his own place his own situation had a little bit of money had a business and I made a conscious decision that this is somebody I wanted to have a child with. He wanted to marry me. And here's the thing. I'm not mad at it and I ain't judging it. I know people are going to probably try to make a big deal about it. But she didn't say I was a gold digger out here looking and I was trying to trap him. No. Portia had been very clear that she wanted a baby. Clear. And she found a man that she thought she could, you know, have a baby with and be, and be good. I ain't mad at you, Portia. I'm not mad at you at all. Um, then we got this whole thing with Riley leaving, packing up. Poor Candy. Baby, this is the best storyline you got this season. We are in trouble, okay? But Riley packing up, leaving for college. Listen, Riley is a brat. And I don't be talking about people's kids. But it seems like every opportunity they get for the last two seasons, every time we see Riley, she making little snide comments at Candy. Every chance she get to sort of throw a little little snide comment, throw a little shade, she does. And I know that her and Candy probably have a good relationship, but on camera, it all it just comes off as bratty. To me, it does. To me, it does. But anyway, so at the end of the episode, Riley is riding off into the sunset. They taking her to NYU, child, and I wish her the best. I do. It's hard. I have. I know people who started their freshman year in the middle of this pandemic. It ain't easy. And like Candy said, you know, it'll hit me probably when I get home and the house is empty and she's not here. She turns 18. I won't be able to go spend the day with her and, and, and celebrate with her. And so it's a lot. Um, Ace, going back to the overproduced situation, I feel like that whole scene with Ace was contrived and produced. I feel like they gave Ace those lines and Ace read his lines honey and he turned them camp them, them waterworks on like i really feel like all of that was a was just part of the plan that's just that's how i felt y'all when they asked him what you gonna miss about riley you could see he was trying to remember his lines child he was trying to remember his lines anyway so we see cynthia working with her wedding i mean with the party coordinator to get this party together it's an all-white affair she's got this whole winter wonderland theme and she wants snow, and she wants this, and she wants that. She's got an ice sculpture. This is clearly the middle of summer. She's got a whole ice sculpture thing working. And, um, you know, so they have it. So everybody's COVID tested so they can take their mask off, child, whatever. They made sure to say that. I'm sure that was so that people like me wouldn't be like, oh, my gosh, they didn't have on no mask. Right. Everybody was tested. Okay, good. So... Kenya is really concerned about everybody being on time. She, of course, had to be shady and throw some shady comments in there but she's talking about everybody being on time because in this group it don't always work out that way people don't be on time like they need to be sometimes and they do this whole countdown thing where who's going to be there first who's going to get there before um before cynthia and um 
might get there because of course it's a surprise party so you want the majority and that's always the hardest part about coordinating a surprise party it's easier nowadays with cell phones and text messages and all of that but you know i remember throwing a surprise party for my mom for her birthday back i mean years ago okay and that whole my, like my dad had to go to a payphone at the mall to call me to let me know they were on their way because they was leaving the movie theater i remember that he was had to get, tell my mama a lie so he could go get some go away from her so he could call from a payphone right so nowadays it's a lot easier, but that is always a stressful thing when you are trying to line up these surprise parties, right? And of course, nobody but Candy knew what the party was really about in the whole situation, right? So everybody gets there. Now everybody ain't there. Marlo was late. Latoya was late. Portia was late, late. I mean, Portia was late. Um, so everybody gets there and Cynthia and Mike walk in and child, they wasn't even paying attention. They didn't see Cynthia walk in. They didn't know that they were there. They was having conversations and finally they were just like, oh, surprise. Listen, this episode was about as tired as that party was. Okay. The party was tied. It was tied, tied. Okay. So then Cynthia and Mike are sitting there like, what? I thought we was meeting Biden. Where's Biden? Oh, this for us? But is Biden still coming? He's, oh, he's not. He's not coming. All right, then. Um, all right, well, let's party. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of how the whole thing went down, right? And it's like, then you had to look around because everything had to hashtag, 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 excuse me, Lord, see chill right um, well chill see hill excuse me and so and there's pictures of them on the screen and all kinds of stuff and then it finally sort of clicks like oh yeah this is for us oh that's nice so then they had to talk about the fact that they pulled you know they pulled the bait and switch where the party is really coming from kenya but they told everybody the party was coming from candy because you know that's the only way people was going to show up child and then they proceeded to just it was tied. I mean, they had a band, but Candy was singing. I know everybody gonna talk about Candy and her singing. I ain't going down there. I don't care. Whatever. Um, then Kenya tried to sing. Child, get a mic back to Candy. Um, it was. Then they had to force them to dance and kiss, and it was just. It it was hard to watch. I'm just gonna be honest. It was hard to watch. And then Kenya is giving a little speech. And Portia rolls in late. And, of course, Kenya is like, oh, my gosh. Like, she's late and rude. And then people were giving her compliments because, you know, Ken uh, Portia had this nice little red wig, honey. She looked cute. And they were like, and she was just like, I mean, she's going to come in late and then she's going to purposely be talking. She wasn't talking. They were complimenting her. Now, she did start talking a little bit later. She was being a little loud later. But in that moment where you was irritated, she really wasn't. Like, they were complimenting her hair and... But, Portia, you were late. Like, you were late. You were late, late. Like, you was real late. Like, you was... you was late. Like, you was later than Candy late. And, you know, they all talk about how late Candy has been. You was later than Candy late. Anyway. Um, then they proceeded to have a whole nother situation with the music and stuff. And then they finally brought the chef out and she went over the um selection i want to taste that warm cauliflower um salad i've been really on cauliflower for the last couple of months i really have been eating a lot a lot of cauliflower cauliflower rice cauliflower mash i've been like i've been really getting cauliflower tots have y'all had the veggie okay went left bring it back so now while they eating dinner todd is looking at the basketball game and mike is asking todd what the score is why because the two of them were like the only men there and they could care less about what these women was getting into now the whole dinner was really really nice minus the 15 minutes that kenya wanted to bring up the fact that she wasn't invited to portia's party and that she bought her daughter a gift and she would love to have presented it to her daughter herself but she wasn't invited to the party and portia was like okay well lauren ain't know like what was up with us like lauren ain't know whether me and you was cool or not and she ain't want no issue so yeah she didn't invite you so then Kenya was like, oh, so we're going to throw Lauren under the bus? She was like, no, I'm not doing that either. I'm just explaining what happened. And then Portia was like, and basically, it, you know, in her professional, she was like, basically, you're proving her point. Because you are being an ass about this whole situation. And so you're basically proving her whole point as to why 
she didn't want to invite you. Yeah. But the rest of the evening went off well. Um, Kenya, I mean, Cynthia asked Kenya and Candy to be her bridesmaids. You know, she said at first we didn't want to have bridesmaids, but then we, you know, decided to. So she asked the two of them. And, of course, Kenya had to make a big deal about the fact that she was in the wedding, in the wedding, in the wedding, and y'all aren't, y'all aren't, y'all aren't. I don't think anybody cares. Nobody really cares. Um, I think that was pretty much it. Marlo showed up, child. She was late too, honey. She Marlo was late too. Yeah, I just listen. I'm so over it. I'm just so over it, y'all. It is so ridiculous. Anyway, y'all, let me know what y'all think, child. Drop it in those comments, please.